So he says there's darkness in this world that is uh, inevitably presses hard on us all, leaving an indelible mark of pain and suffering. And then he quotes Job uh, chapter 30, uh, verse 26, mm-hmm. who has ever walked this earth and not cried out, when I hoped for good, evil came, and when I waited for light, darkness came. Right, And so he says there's a a penetrating set of questions then that emerge as a result of this situation that we find ourselves in, right, Uh, when these types of things happen to us. Where is God? Could he not protect us from whatever this issue is? And, you know, why doesn't he intervene? Those types of things, right? Yeah, Uh, and that's something that the Bible kind of uh, um, addresses. It's it's not, uh, 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 you know, Oh, uh, the pain and suffering is just an illusion. You don't really experience it, uh, and you kind of try and work your way to a, a, a higher standard of consciousness to to get away from the, the pain that you're you're not supposed to be experiencing, uh, e- even though they, they teach on it. Um, and, and it's not uh, like pain is 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 just this Pandora's box where uh, you know it's it's kind of this uh, mythology of of it, it where, where it came from. There's there's no clue, and then. All of a sudden, it, it bursts forth. There, there's an origin story to it. There's a reason for why it is, and also, uh, it's it's addressed within scripture. And so that's that's part of the thing that he's talking about. Is here's here's in his book is he's addressing the theology uh, behind it. What what is the biblical basis for? Yeah. So he goes on to ask the question. Well, the, what is the question of the, the theodicy? And so, how can a uh, the good and almighty God allow evil to coexist in the created order He crafted with such singular beauty? What has become of his good creation? So right. that's kind of the, the theodicy. The, yeah. right. So the theodicy is basically an explanation or a def, uh, uh, of why God allows evil. We attempt to give reasons why we believe that God allows evil, right? right. So it's more than just a, you know, there's, and he's going to talk briefly about this, but there's a distinction between uh, you know, this defense of, of the problem of evil, which is most of, most of the philo- uh, philosophers deal with that. Mm-hmm. But then a theodicy is not just a defense that says that God and evil can both exist, coexist, but it's a, an attempt to explain why God allows evil. That's the idea of what a theodicy right. is. Right? Or does, does evil just pop up and God says, oh no, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> Pro- probably not. So uh, uh, he asked the further question, why has he, God, allowed evil to corrupt the broad landscape of our planet, and its inhabitants, everything in creation is touched by this, uh, it's affected by sin and, and uh, the the decay and heat death of the universe yeah. is, all, is all mixed mixed in there so right. uh, d- you know animal uh, animals killing animals uh, humans having war I mean he, he lists a, a, a countless numbers of just genocidal uh, uh, um, events within the scope of the last 2,000 years let alone you know all of human history right and so that is the question of theodicy right. Why has he allowed evil, right? That's the question mm-hmm. that our theodicy attempts to answer, right. right? The question is, how does one seek to justify a good answer and sovereign God in the face of evil? Mm-hmm. What is our apologetic? What is our defense, our giving an account for why uh, there's a good sovereign God, but also evil in the world? Yeah. Yeah. So he says uh, the uh, the problem of theodicy in its more formal articulation goes back to the Greek philosopher Epicurus, right? This was in uh, around 300 BC, mm-hmm. and so it forms a uh, what he calls a trilemma. So it juxtaposes the following notions with one another: number one, God is good; number two, God is powerful. And number three, yet evil exists, Mm -hmm. right? So how in the world do you put all of that together, right? Putting one or both of the first two points, he says, under suspicion, Mm -hmm. right? The idea here is God is evil and God is powerful. Well, well, then what's this deal about evil? Now, he says that Epicurus's uh, concerns with God and evil were uh, succinctly restated by the 18th century Scottish philosopher, our good friend David Hume. Good old Hume. Yeah, right. Rearing his, he was pretty intelligent, so he can't say anything bad about it. That's right. And so Hume (laughs) Hume asked a a set of similar questions that uh, Epicurus deals with. Hume says... Uh, is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is uh, 
impotent, mm-hmm. right? Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent, right? Is he both able and willing? From whence then is evil? Right. So those are the questions that Hume asked right. with regard to it, right? So God, you know, is, is, is he willing to do it, but he's not able? Then he does. He's not all powerful, right? And if he's able, but he's not willing, then he's not a good God, right? right? And but if he's able uh, and willing, then why do we have evil? Mm-hmm. That's the point that Hume is trying to make here, right? right? So I'm just going to deny that evil exists and that <laughs> nothing bad happens. And there, it's, it's solved the problem. It's, it's kind of like dealing with inerrancy. If I don't have to defend inerrancy, then we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. It's, it's it makes that, it uh, easy, but it's not satisfying. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you don't believe that the uh, world is real, but then you look both ways across, across the street. <laughs>